There's only one problem with Stephen J. Nichols' new biography about R.C. Sproul called R.C. Sproul, A Life, published by Crossway. And I'll tell you exactly what it is in just a moment. But I want to welcome you to this channel. My name is Matthew Everhart. I'm the pastor of Gospel Fellowship PCA. We are a reformed Bible-believing church just north of Pittsburgh in western Pennsylvania. If you're looking for a church like that, by all means, you found one. Please come visit us sometime. Gospel Fellowship PCA. By the way, we're also planting a church called Living Hope Fellowship in Evan City, Harmony, Zealy, Noble area. So if you know anyone that lives that way, please let them know that we're planting a Bible-believing, Christ-preaching, reformed church in that area. All right, well, we're, wanna, we're gonna talk about the new uh, biography of R.C. Sproul this morning by uh, Stephen J. Nichols. And I will simply say this, um, I have one problem with this biography, and we're gonna get to that in just a moment. But overall, this book is at least a B plus to an A. This is an excellent book. I'm not complaining. I'm not critiquing it. After all, who could critique uh, Stephen Nichols? He's a wonderful author. He's a great biographer. He's a fellow Jonathan Edwards scholar, as I am a Jonathan Edwards scholar. So certainly I'm not going to pick on somebody who's within the guild of, of Edwards scholarship, unfairly at least. And who could pick on R.C. Sproul? R.C. Sproul is undoubtedly, and without any qualification or hesitation, one of the great reformed titans of our day. Um, it was a pleasure to meet R.C. Sproul a couple times in my own life. I think I met Sproul maybe three times. He probably would not have remembered those encounters as much as I remembered those encounters. Of course, Sproul probably had hundreds or thousands of encounters with his readers, his viewers. I might even say fans, as he had encounters with me a couple times. I met him twice at various conferences, one time at a small dinner party that was wonderful. And every time I met Sproul, he was an extraordinarily gracious man. Everybody who knows Sproul or who has ever met Sproul uh, regards him as one of the greats. Sproul did as much for the cause of Reformed theology and Bible-believing Christianity as practically anybody else in the second half of the 20th century. And so my point in this video is certainly not to critique R.C. Sproul. I will tell you a bit about this biography. I do give it a B plus or an A as far as books go. Um, one of the things I loved about this book is it tells a lot of local history. Now here we are situated in western Pennsylvania. Uh, just 20 minutes, half an hour north of the city of Pittsburgh. And if you read this biography and you happen to live in Western Pennsylvania, you're probably gonna love it because uh, it tells a lot of local history. A lot of the neighborhoods, a lot of the streets, a lot of the churches in Western Pennsylvania are named, especially in the earlier portions of the book. And one of the things I delighted in myself is to, is to learn, I did not know this, that one of Sproul's earliest churches that he pastored was in a tiny little spot called Lindora, uh, right near Butler, Pennsylvania, where, where I live practically just right there. So that was really cool. I did not even know that. Um, you're going to get the whole story of Sproul's life, a lot of charming details that Nichols gleaned from actually knowing Sproul far better than I ever knew him for sure. Of course, Nichols is going to give a very favorable telling of Sproul's life story, given that they work so closely together. And Nichols is one of the uh, teaching fellows at Ligonier Ministries as well as the person to whom R.C. Sproul entrusted the care of Reformation Bible College. So obviously, Nichols is going to tell a very positive story, and, and it is certainly a charming story indeed. I love to hear the details about Sproul's love for his wife Vesta, which is just a, a wonderful story of, of young, pure, faithful love over the years. And one of the things that is just remarkable about this biography is how rare men like R.C. Sproul are. I mean, think about living an entire life, a whole ministry in which he never had one moral scandal, not one sexual scandal, not one financial scandal. Sproul was truly one of the most dignified and faithful servants of the Lord and obviously extraordinarily talented and gifted. So please don't take anything that I say in this video as a harsh critique of R.C. Sproul. I would, I would certainly never do that. I do love the man, honor him my, uh, myself. Um, I will tell you that he was very formative for me in the early days of my theological moorings. I clearly remember driving to Malone College where I got my Bible degree, my first degree, my bachelor's degree, listening to Renewing Your Mind on the radio, uh, reading some of his books like The Holiness of God and Chosen by God. My goodness, I can still uh, not only imagine those books still in my hand, but I can probably uh, picture where certain paragraphs are in those books, and I can even smell the paper. These books had major formative significance for me as a, as a young pastor and as a, a mind forming in, in my theological undergirding. So nothing there to challenge Sproul 
at all. I would say this, if you are the kind of person that loves Table Talk Magazine, uh, you love Renewing Your Mind radio broadcast, you love going to Ligonier conferences, uh, maybe you even went to the Ligonier Study Center back when it was in Western Pennsylvania, or uh, visited the headquarters when it moved to Orlando, if you've done any of those things, if you know somebody that's gone to Reformation Bible College, if you uh, attend or have attended or perhaps are a member of St. Andrew's Church there, uh, just uh, what is it, northeast of Orlando, then this book is going to be a thrill ride for you. It's going to be an absolute joy for you to read through the life of one of the great titans of the faith. Uh, Sproul defended the faith in an orthodox manner. And he was there at some of the most critical moments. He was the one who inspired the Chicago Statement on Biblical Inerrancy, a very critical moment for evangelicalism. Uh, Sproul had relationships with all of the, the great ones of the day, uh, the John Pipers to the John MacArthur's. Uh, Sproul was just right in the midst of this incredible emergence, uh, or, or we might call a resurgence of Reformed theology in the latter half of the 20th century, early part of the 21st century. Um, now, so what's my problem with this book? Well, I don't want to critique it too harsh, but I do have one problem that just kind of drives me nuts a little bit. And that has to do with the purpose of Christian biography. If, on one hand, the purpose of Christian biography is to simply record the events as they transpired, then certainly this book uh, does that well. It tells the story of R.C. Sproul's life and the formation of all of these important ministries that Sproul founded and led throughout the years. So it does that well. No questions there, no quibbles. But part of what biography is supposed to do is to inspire the reader to go and do likewise. And here's my problem, here's my critique with this biography. It comes across as so overtly positive in the retelling of the story that it almost can't find even one character fault of R.C. Sproul throughout the entire book. Now, listen, Sproul was a Calvinist, so he preached the doctrine of total depravity. Certainly, he was a sinner himself, and far be it from me, from me to even suggest what one of his sins were. I'm not here to do that. All I'm saying is that uh, the biography gives an extraordinarily positive retelling to the story, such that you have to wonder was there any real fight for sanctification? Was there any real struggle with sin? Was there any obstacle that Sproul had to overcome? Uh, listen, throughout the book, Nichols presents Sproul so positively that every time Sproul goes on the golf course, it would seem, in this book, he hits a hole in one. Every time Sproul is playing baseball as a youth and gets up to bat, he hits a home run. Nichols even tells us, and I find this hard to believe, but I'm not challenging the veracity of this, uh, that when Sproul wrote his books, he did so on those yellow legal pads and wrote them out without any crossouts or restarts and simply submitted them to the publisher uh, already ready to go. Now, as a writer myself, like I'm not questioning whether that's true. I'm just saying, wow, that's a bit much um, for the rest of us who are so normal, so average, who are so... Oh, you know, ministry for most of us is such an uphill struggle. We're just slogging along, just trying to get by from day to day. Uh, the battles of ministry, the struggles of our sanctification, the difficulties of leading our families, it just doesn't come through in this biography in any kind of a real sense. And so when Nichols presents R.C. Sproul, he constantly presents him as an undefeated champion who everything he touches turns to gold. So he is, uh, to use a little bit of uh, a mythology here, he is the, Ach the Achilles that doesn't have an Achilles heel in this book. Uh, he is the Midas for whom every single thing he touches turns to gold. And as you're reading this, you have to wonder to yourself, is that what real life is actually going to be like for my pastor or for my church or for my ministry? Because a lot of us, we experience a ton of difficulty and hardship and if there is much difficulty or hardship here, it's certainly not in R.C. Sproul, maybe in the others around him, but Nichols presents Sproul so positively uh, without even mentioning any uh, foibles or wrinkles or warts in his character or his personality. I mean, you have to wonder, did Sproul ever get upset? Did he ever struggle in his relationships? Uh, did he ever have to battle through in sanctification to overcome some sort of besetting sin? If so, we're not told about it. Uh, the only minor thing that one might say that Nichols points out as an error or a flaw in R.C. Sproul is that he was a smoker. But even there, it's like, okay, but did he ever try to quit? Did he ever fail and try to quit? Like, give me something, Nichols, so that I feel more like, um, 
like he's a real person. Uh, and this is part of the reason why we love Christian biography, right? We love reading Augustine's confessions because he struggled so much to overcome his early temptations and his sin. Just go back and read the confessions, how real Augustine is with his uh, struggle with uh, sexual lust and temptation. Or if you read about Martin Luther, his dealing with his anger and his lashing out, especially towards the end of his life. Uh, if you read about Charles Spurgeon, his battles with depression. If you read about John Bunyan in his own autobiography, um, Grace Abounding to the Chief of Sinners, he talks about his uh, demonically inspired doubts that he struggled with. Um, and, and we just don't get the idea here in this book that Sproul really struggled with anything because, like I mentioned, everything he touches turns to gold. Um, if he starts a radio broadcast, it's the, immediately the best. If, it's, uh, if he starts a conference, they're packed out everywhere. If he starts a newsletter, it's the best-selling thing since hotcakes. And maybe all that's true, um, but it still doesn't give the reader any sense that he can join Sproul in his battle uh, some sort of uphill battle. If you think about the, the book, A Pilgrim's Progress, I realize that's not a Christian biography, but one of the reasons why we love Pilgrim's Progress is because we so dearly and deeply identify with Pilgrim's struggle. He has to fight Apollyon. Uh, he makes a mistake and takes the road down, uh, down Bypath Meadow. Uh, he, he struggles in Doubting Castle against the giants of doubt and despair. But as we read about the life of Sproul, we just don't sense that he is anything less than the undefeated Achilles who conquers every single uh, bad guy that he ever faces. Everything he does is presented as immediately and gloriously successful. And I think some readers might find that um, maybe a little bit of out of touch with their own Christian experience. Now again, the Lord is uh, the one who, who uh, bestows his gifts upon men. Nobody would doubt that Sproul had gifts of communication and intelligence and winsomeness uh, and, and certainly great depth of character. I'm not calling any of that into question. But it would have been nice if Nichols would have given us at least one area where Sproul really has to fight, perhaps in sanctification. Uh, did he ever get angry and dropkick a, de a deacon? Did he ever, uh, you know... Did he ever launch a ministry that failed, unlike the other things that he did that were so successful? And if Nichols couldn't find one example, maybe I could suggest one for uh, another biographer who comes down the line, or perhaps if there's ever a second edition of this particular book. You know, uh, R.C. Sproul Jr. Um, had quite a cataclysmic fall in the Ashley Madison situation. Some of you are already aware of that. Now, that's not a fault of R.C. Sproul himself, but his son uh, certainly went through some difficult times. It would have been nice, perhaps, if Nichols could have taken us maybe into, um, into the room when R.C. Sproul Jr. Uh, was uh, left off of the teaching fellows of Ligonier. Maybe a little bit of the tension that might have been there between father and son, if there was any. And in fact, the only reference to R.C. Sproul Jr.'s um, sad fall uh, in the Ashley Madison affair that happened a few years ago is mentioned very briefly in a footnote in the book, uh, not explicitly, but just in a footnote. And the footnote takes you to a statement from Ligonier Ministries on the internet. I went to that statement on the internet and wouldn't you know it, it had been removed from uh, Ligonier's website. So unfortunately, there's no hint, no, no, um, not, not even a suggestion that such a thing even took place. It would have been nice if we would have been able to struggle with a father as he you know, grapples with his son through this, uh, this kind of an embarrassment to, uh, to Ligonier and, and to the church in general. Other than that, I think you will greatly enjoy uh, this biography by Stephen J. Nichols, R.C. Sproul of Life. Again, I give it a B plus or an A with that only exception that I would have liked to see a little bit more struggle, the struggle of, of sainthood and sanctification as we follow after Christ. All right, well, I'm going to put a link to this book in the description of this video so you can pop over to Amazon.com and get that. If you, uh, if you like Christian history and biography, I do want to suggest, um, perhaps humbly, uh, my own book, Holy Living, Jonathan Edwards' 70 Resolutions for Living the Christian Life. 
Um, I try not to make the same mistake that I think Nichols made in my book on Jonathan Edwards, and I'm pretty honest about some of his failings as a person, including his uh, relationship to slaveholding and slavery. I freely acknowledge that in the book. I will also post a link to that book in the description of this video as well. I do want to thank Crossway for giving me a review copy of R.C. Sproul, A Life. They did not pay me or anything like that for this review. It's just my honest thoughts. Uh, though they did give me the book for free for my review. All right, thank you so much for watching this video. I do love you lots, and we'll talk to you later.